All right, welcome to week one, everybody. Welcome to week one of the physiotherapy exercise and physical activity course that we're running online in Physiopedia. Um, week one this week is going to be all about uh, understanding physical acti activity, the benefits of physical activity, and we'll also be looking at global trends in physical activity and inactivity. So to talk a little bit about all of that at the beginning of week one, I'm going to be having a chat with Anna Lowe here today. Hi, Anna. Hello. Hi. So, Anna, you um, have an interest in physical activity. How about you um, just introduce yourself to us for everybody that hasn't met you before and just tell us a little bit about your work, what you get up to and how you came to be sort of working in this field. Yeah, sure. Um, so I'm based in the UK. I'm a senior lecturer in physiotherapy at Sheffield Hallam University. Um, and my clinical background um, as a chartered physio um, was working in musculoskeletal practice, uh, mainly in primary care settings. Um, and I became really aware of um, the issues that physical inactivity presented to our clinical populations, really. Um, and and also to match that, the, the amazing opportunity that we've got to influence people's physical activity levels through our clinical contacts. Um, so I became really interested in um, physical inactivity as, as a public health issue. Um, and I've done a few bits of research looking at kind of the role of physio in physical in promoting physical activity. And I'm currently um, midway through my doctorate in that area. Um, I've also further developed my interest in, in public health and I've had um, some recent involvement working at Public Health England, um, looking at how physios as part of the allied health professions group um, can contribute to na national public health priorities. So... So when we're talking about physical activity, um, this might be a really simple, basic question, but what do we mean by physical activity? Um, well, physical activity is basically just moving. Um, and we've seen such a lot of changes in our lifestyle over the last century that we're um, the vast majority of people are far more sedentary than they might have been 50 years ago, for example. Um, people talk about physical activity being designed out of our lives and, and you can see that with advances in, advances in technology that that is really uh, really something that's very apparent in, in day to day life. Um, so physical activity is basically about moving, it's about moving more um, and I think there's a very key message that we'll try and um, reinforce through this course that, that anything's better than nothing and any small increase in physical activity can really help. Um, there are national physical activity guidelines and there are also global physical activity guidelines and some of the physical activity guidelines vary country to country. Um, in the UK we, we work towards a, a, a 150 minutes of moderate exercise um, per week um, but, but again that, that's aspirational for many people and for clinical populations who might have been sedentary for a long time and might have a number of barriers and issues such as ongoing pain and um, lack of social support and those kind of things, then then really it's about just initiating some kind of activity um, and, um, yeah, and seeing the benefits of that. So it's not really telling people to go out and do so much exercise per week, is it? It's really um, encouraging people to be physically active as m um, in relation to the, their health context. Mm. Is that right? Yeah, 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 absolutely. I think it's the, the messages that we need to give people should be individual, individualised. They, they need to be tailored to that person's um, situation. And for many people, sport is a complete turn off and um, it might just be about gardening more. It might be about active travel. Um, it might be about walking the dog more. It can you know, physical activity comes in many different guises and it's whatever works for that person. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's not about... Um, you know, trying to work out how you can do a triathlon. It's about thinking about your own health, valuing your own health and thinking about the things that you can modify in your own life to, to improve your own health. Or, or us doing that for the encouraging our patients to do that in, in our clinical contact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. yeah, absolutely. And so when we're asking people to be more active and to move more, what are the benefits that we're hoping they will see? 
Um, well, the benefits of physical activity are so well documented, and we've got oh, we've got you know over I think fifty plus years of, of evidence to to show the the health benefits, the to um, the long term health benefits of um of physical activity and it, it's everything from bone health to reducing the risk of dementia to um oh they, they go on and on don't they reducing the risk of cardiovascular disease uh, improving memory that's been a recent one in the um in the press this week and um, so they're so far reaching and there's you know there's there's compelling evidence that um becoming more physically active improves the um it improves your um, quality of life and can also extend your life as well um, and uh, there's there's a lots of really useful summaries of where we're up to with the research I think the, the 23 and a half hours um, YouTube clip that that went viral a few years ago is you know that's uh, a couple of years old now but it's still incredibly relevant and gives a really nice overview of the um, uh, the benefits to physical activity. Cool um, so when so we're encouraging people to be more physically active to achieve all these benefits um, in our clinical contacts. What are, and then are we seeing any trends in this sort of field in physical activity or physical inactivity across the globe? You've already mentioned that, you know, we're becoming more sedentary as a global population, I suppose. Are there any what kind of trends are we seeing? Are you familiar with those in any way? Yeah, I mean, I, I would have to apologise for my UK bias. I'm, I'm much more familiar with the, the UK picture. Um, and, and physical activity is monitored by a number of organisations now. And um, the, the one, the, the stats that spring to mind, and these might not be the most recent, but um, there was some, um, some information published through the King's fund in the UK relatively recently and that looked at physical activity but in the context of multiple risk behaviours so thinking about other um, risk factors that are modifiable so smoking alcohol and um, physical inactivity and nutrition um, so as the four kind of key modifiable risk factors um, and what that showed was that overall in the UK as an example um, health behaviours are improving but when you actually split the most affluent populations and the least affluent populations the most affluent are improving significantly and the least active um, so the least affluent are, are, are actually getting worse in those indicators so um, there's a real split there's a real health inequality issue there as well um, and I think it's something that as physiotherapists we need to be really mindful of um, and we, we see a lot of kind of top line statistics about it and I think it just shows how important it is to um, uh, to, to understand the what's actually happening when you unpick the statistics um, I think as, as physios we're, we're fortunate um, now because we've got access to so much data um, and again in the UK as an example we can just um, access online um, um, local indicators at a kind of regional level of how active or inactive um, local populations are and the other kind of risk factors and and health issues that are common in our in our um, locality and then we've also got um, access to national and international data as well so we're really lucky in that um, yeah in, in relation to to the amount of data we've got access to. So it sounds like it's it'll be really useful for people to start thinking about as they work through the course to start thinking about the context that they're working in and the sort of clients or patients that they work with and really really thinking about um, the like you said before about individualizing how they're going to encourage these people to be more physically active um, for that particular person and their context so um, so it's something for people to be mindful of just as they're learning through the course, I think, to think about their own contexts and their own patients that they're working with um, from what you're saying. Mm. And, it, and it's useful that we're able to access the data. Hopefully everyone will be able to do some research and access data for their own situation and, and their own country and where they're working. And um, we'll be able to do, I think we cover that a lot in week two. Um, so that will be good. Um, so if you could um, give one piece of advice to healthcare practitioners or people on this course um, to encourage patients to be more physically active, what would it be? Um, I think um, it would be to be sensitive about the approach that 
they take and when I'm going to say two things actually the first one is to be sensitive about the approach that you take it's not about telling people to be more active it's about ensuring that people have access to the information that they need to make an informed decision so you are trying to make sure that people understand the benefits and then engaging in a discussion about whether they are actually interested in becoming more active based on that knowledge and if they are then how you can help and how you can facilitate and support that it's not about telling what people uh, it's not about telling people what to do um and I was going to say something else and it's just gone out of my head <laughs> <laughs> maybe it'll come a, back what else it'll come back to me in a minute um uh, oh yes that was it it's come back to me already the, the other thing was that um as physios physical activity is such a massive issue um and when you're dealing with something like that, we really need to acknowledge that we require a system wide approach to increasing physical activity. And, and as physios, um, we largely deal with individual approaches. So on a kind of one to one basis. So I think it's important that we recognise that that's only ever going to be part of the picture. Um, and, and on top of that, we need, um, you know, engagement of um, uh, other local partners and stakeholders and thinking about activity travel active transport about healthcare and all those kind of levers um that can influence activity levels um but uh, so i think it's recognizing that uh, we deal mainly in in um individual approaches and recognizing that although it's only part of the picture it's still a really valuable part of the picture uh, and as we improve with our um contribution through individual approaches it's so then looking at how else we can influence so how else we can show leadership and 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 work outside of our kind of traditional one-to-one physiotherapy practice good I think those are two really really good pieces of advice and I think there's something that definitely two things that people should um think about as they work through this course um really um to bear them in the back of your mind as you work through all the materials think and it's a it's a really nice introduction Anna thank you to what we've what we're going to be covering in week one and also some nice streams to take with us through the whole course so um so it's been really good to chat to you today Anna is we've already we met Anne Gates last week Anna is one of our facilitators on the course so we'll be seeing you in the discussion forums Anna so if you've got any questions for Anna you can mention them in there for her she'll be around for the rest of the course which is great um, and anything else, Anna, that you'd like to say or share with the participants or anyone else um, engaging in this course before we go? Um, no, I'll just finish by saying how excited I am about the MOOC. I think it's a brilliant opportunity and um, and I'm really excited about being a facilitator um, so that I can share some of the learning that I've, I've um, you know, had over the last few years, but also expand my own knowledge around the kind of global um, situation. And it'll be so interesting and um, uh, to, to have online conversations with people from around the, the globe. So it's a brilliant opportunity and um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, we're all we're all excited. Um, there's thousands of us on the course, so we're all excited. I think there's going to be lots and lots of knowledge sharing and um, learning from each other, which is going to be great. So, yeah, great. Thank you very much, Anna, to, for chatting to us today. We'll um, see you in the discussion forums. Brilliant.